So after reading a couple of you guys' comments, it turns out some of you think this is basically a Reddit channel except without a robot. Sorry to tell you, I am in fact a robot. Today's video, we're looking at some Reddit content. Today's subreddit of choice is the London subreddit. The thread is, what's the biggest misconception about London? Can't wait to hear about this. I've lived here nine years, okay? I now own a place in London. I'm about to see what the heck is going on. Jumping right on in, what is the biggest misconception about London? That it is a 24 hour city, love London, but still not quite there versus New York. Is that a misconception? Does anyone really believe that? I, I lived here for one day and I was like, what? Things are closing at 11 p.m. So basically the corner shops close at 11. That's, I guess, late enough. The bigger stores close around like nine or 10, unless it's a Sunday in which 5 p.m., good luck getting into Morrison's, but 24 seven, absolutely not. One thing I do still prefer, you can get Taco Bell, a little bit of Dunkin', a little bit any, anything really 24 seven in the US, uh, whereas sadly in London, you can't even get a friggin' meal deal. That it rains a lot. It's gray a lot, but it's not rainy often. I think I've said this multiple times in this channel. It is just a, a meme at this point, it's a stereotype. People think London is a very rainy city. You know, that's just what especially Americans will think. I can tell you the truth, it's not really that rainy. It's just gray. We have a lot of stratus and sometimes you get the pissy rain, but you don't really get much rain. In fact, I'd say like in the last nine years, the amount of like torrential rain I've experienced, I can count on like one hand. Whereas opposed to growing up in New Jersey, multiple times a year, I'd have huge downpours where sometimes I couldn't even drive with the windshield wipers all the way on because it was so rainy. London, not really that much. A lot of people moan about the public transport. I think it's pretty great generally. I would agree. I don't think it's a misconception. Does anyone complain about London's TFL? Like, I guess the way it's run, sure. But the public transit compared to the rest of the country, anytime I say any slight complaint about like, oh, this little thing, people from outside of London go like, at least you have more than one train line slash more than zero train lines. <laughs> this is all about context though. You see, I used to live near zone two Jubilee line station. And if I had to wait for more than four minutes for a train, I was livid. Yeah, I think it's one of those things. Like as a Londoner, you might get really upset if you have to take the overground and you have to wait 10 minutes to get a train. Whereas that is a luxury if you live outside of the city. So yeah, it, it's about the context I'd say. That tower bridge is called London Bridge. I'd say that's a pretty accurate misconception. A lot of tourists might think that. I think a lot of people have talked about this ad nauseum. So who doesn't know this at this point? I'm gonna just necessarily link. Jay Foreman did a really good video about this recently. London Bridge, Tower Bridge. I would recommend you check it out. He is the best. I was gonna say the Bay, but I don't want him to think I'm coming on to him. Or do I? Anyway, the next one we have, misconceptions about London. I'm in love with Jay Foreman. That everyone lives in a nice terrace, just like Paddington Bear in the movie. Oh my God. I assume the, the house that that family lived in what, at least 2.5 million pounds in terms of what they could sell it for, not what it's actually worth. Yeah, when are we gonna get more realistic kids movies set in London where the main character uh, lives with six others in a tiny box house next to a loud train track in zone six? Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> literally my last like four years of my life, I've, besides this place, I've like never lived in a place just by myself or just with one other person, except when I lived with Dodie. It's always been big flat shares as the only possible way to afford living in this stupid expensive city. But yeah, I think we need more representation there. The so I've seen an episode of The Inbetweeners and doesn't he and his friends live in Croydon together? That, I, I liked that about the first episode I watched. I was like, oh, this is actually representing my experience of London, especially right out of like university. That's what I liked about it. It was like, oh, th th this is basically real experience. Not, hello, honey, the butler didn't clean my shoes when I walked in. That I just, I'm kind of done with that style of content. Misconception, people aren't friendly. By and large, the friendliest thing someone can do in the big city is not get in your face or space. Okay, so by that definition, people are very friendly because they never talk to you. I, I would say it's not a misconception. People just in London are a bit colder. That's just how it is. I, not an exaggeration, just especially if you go out of the bubble for one day, you'll be like, wow, people talk to me. This is so nice. <laughs> I did talk about that in my living in London pros and cons video. If you haven't seen that yet, that'll be linked somewhere full of actual conceptions that aren't misconceptions. I, I've, I speak English really well here. Next misconception, that it's unsafe. Everyone's carrying knives, etc., etc. I mean, crime happens, of course it does, but folk, particularly Americans who've never left their home country, they make it out like you can't step foot in certain areas without getting stabbed, just not true. It isn't, it, that is a big misconception that is weird that mostly comes from Americans who have not 
really left the US at all. Maybe it comes from knowing that there's a lot of places in the US like that. Any big city in the US, except without knives, it's just guns. And so they're like, oh, well, stabbings happen. Uh, as a quick example, for instance, after that really uh, tragic stabbing that had happened in Borough Market a couple years ago, my mom was terrified for me. And she was like, Evan, you're so unsafe there. There's a terrorist attack. And I'm like, it's a do it happens very rarely, mom. It's not like I'm going to like go out now and everyone's on edge. It is just weird. And maybe it's because you don't hear any news from the UK when you're watching US spoon fed media. And so when you do hear news and it's like, there's a stabbing first time in a multiple years that it's this bad. And it's like, whoa, that's happening all the time over there. I don't know, maybe look at the number of school shootings. Maybe, uh, but no, I've never felt unsafe really uh, in any areas in London I've mostly been. And I've lived here nine years, so I feel like I, I can actually say that. That being said, uh, I am in a position where maybe I have a bias. So I'll just throw that out there. Maybe because of my high height stature and I feel more safe compared to other people that might be walking alone at night. That being said, I did feel really freaked out when I was staying in an Airbnb in Plastow. It was, uh, that was the first time I was like, oh, I would not want to live in this area because I just felt the vibes, but I didn't get stabbed. I did it. Misconception, there's a lot of good coffee shops here, but they all close early. Why would you go to a coffee shop after, I'm gonna say two, okay? Who needs, listen, if I have a coffee at like 3 p.m., I will not be able to fall asleep until 3 a.m. Is anyone else like this with caffeine? I find it bizarre. I find friends that are like going to dinner and then they get a coffee to go after. And I'm like, what are you doing? How do you sleep? I, I, I love coffee. I make it every single morning, but geez, no, 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 no. But yeah, there's a lot of good coffee shops in London, a lot. Uh, I know Caffeine is a really good one. That's uh, north of Oxford Street a bit. There's also Ozone and Old Street. Oh, Coco de Mama is just a bit of a chain, but they do have pretty good coffee as well. Uh, there's another place called Alchemy. Oh, delicious coffee somewhere near, I believe, I used to work in the St. Paul's Ludgate Circus area. A lot of good coffee. That's my recommendation if you're ever in London, just make a list. Delicious, they do not close early. They close perfectly, okay? And now that I've talked about coffee a bit, James Hoffman, collab time, right? L little British first American coffee, hit me up. Love you, baby. All right, next misconception. Uh, from moving out of London, when I tell people I'm from here, they all seem to think that means I lived essentially on Trafalgar Square and that all of London is that busy. That is, uh, I guess if you hear about the big city and you only see stuff in the big city, it makes sense, but I've never really lived that central. I mean, Ealing and Chiswick, super quiet. Anywhere basically in West London, very, very quiet. I also lived in Canterbury, which was so silent. Nothing ever happens there, I swear to God. So yeah, it depends on what area of London you are. It is weird to think that you're in a giant city that can be quiet, but it's big and it's sprawling. I get to get another one about no-go zones, that there's parts of the city that you can't go to because it's so dangerous or uh, always makes me chuckle when people claim London is full of no-go zones ruled by Sharia law or whatever. That's just racists. I mean, that's not a misconception about London. That's just a racist, point blank, that, that pretty much. People really underestimate how green London is. Um, I know there's a lot of good parks, as you're saying. There's a lot of really beautiful parks in London. I myself have made a video pretty much about Gunnersbury Park because I love it so much, but that's specific pockets. The parks are beautiful and there's there's a lot of parks, but there could be more. I, I think it depends on what area you're in really. I have not really much green space where I'm living now. Tragic, that it's dirty. Is that a misconception? It blows my mind. It's not really dirty compared to most cities of its size. Absolutely not. One of the things that blew me away the first time I like landed in the UK was that there were street cleaners. People that just clean the streets every single night. They make it, they take off all of the rubbish as opposed to the uh, US and New York. They just pile it all over the place because there's nowhere to store any of the trash bags. So yeah, London is quite clean comparatively. Oh, massive one. Absolutely here. Biggest misconception so far. Wages compensate the cost. No. No, 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 no. I think we all understand, yes, the average London salary is higher than the rest of the UK, but not the same ratio as how high the rent and how high the more, all the property values are significantly higher. I think we can all understand that's pretty much how it's been across the UK slash world is that everyone's income going up marginally and everything else is going up a lot. It, it's just much, much, much worse in London. It's not like everyone over here is like, 
making the buku de Nero. Here's a bit of an interesting one. We have, as someone who was born and raised in London, I really hate when people say, London isn't somewhere to bring up a family. I have actually heard that quite a lot. I love that I grew up here and I'm looking forward to bringing up my own family in the capital. In fact, I can't wait to take my baby out to our great city's parks, museums, aquariums, etc. I really love that they'll be able to see such a mix of people that'll be totally normal to hear different languages being spoken and different types of food being eaten. In all in all, I'm hoping it gives them a well-rounded view of the world, not to mention a helping hand when they want to start job hunting and live at home with mom and dad, whilst they battle through entry-level jobs and without having to pay London rent prices. That's quite a bit of a wholesome one. I do think that that is one of the nicest things about London is how multicultural the city is. But I, I have heard that quite a few times. It's like, oh, why would you want to raise a child in this in London, this big city? You'd want to go out somewhere else. And I think that really depends. Like I said before in this video, there are pockets of London that are quite quiet, that are nice to bring up a family in. We're not trying to say, if you live in London and you want to raise a family here, you got to go to the middle of like Oxford Circus. Sure, that might not be the best place to raise a family. I can't imagine the child ever hearing the sound of silence by Simon and Garfunkel. It's a good song. I do personally still think it is bizarre. This is just from my upbringing, by the way. It's not bizarre, but for me, I find it bizarre. Kids here going to school, they just ride the standard public buses. I find it fascinating. There's no particular buses. Hey, London life. Tell me if that's another thing outside of London, by the way. I just know that from here and I always found it weird. Thanks for staying up to date. Hope you enjoyed this bit of Reddit content. If you enjoy this, subscribe because I got a couple more of these in the pipeline the next couple weeks. So I hope you uh, stay tuned, see that later. And also if you want, I do have a couple other Reddit videos to check out if you'd like. Anyway, I'll see you guys next Sunday. Have a lovely day, cheerio and goodbye.